just a, a funny guy from for you with a big dream. Frente mais uma vez, dessa vez recebe o uh, up, ele entrou em cheio na cabeça do Yorga. Oh, desligou! Foi uma só! The kind of guy that doesn't back down, he's not afraid of anybody. Uh, outside of the cage, he's a teddy bear. Inside of the cage, he's like a dragon. He's nuts. Um, I wouldn't want to be locked in that way. I feel like he's born to fight. He's real grit. He has real grit as a fighter. Born in Cape Verde, Manning and Forever, a 32-year-old man made his way to the UFC as a heavyweight. Now, he's 6-0, and, and five of those fights are a result of knockout. This man goes by the name of Jorgen De Castro. I live the moment, and this old UFC thing is just like, I don't know, I still didn't get it. Even now as a UFC fighter, De Castro still remembers the humble beginnings he came from. With all his success, he still remembers the struggle he had to go through in Cape Verde. Very tough times. I mean, uh, to build me in a, who I am today, I mean, I wouldn't trade nothing from for all these spirits I got, but my mother was just a single mother with a, I have two more sisters. We used to move town to town because we could afford to pay rent. And even when we, we live in the, in the rent, it'd be like a one bedroom apartment for four people. And sometimes raining, dropping in the, in the, in the place, uh, crazy. I have to look for better life. When I finished the high school at 17, you don't really have too much option in, in, in KV. Either you get with the bad people and do bad things, or you, you sit around and, and wait. In search of a better life, De Castro moved to Portugal at the age of 18. What he found there would change his life forever. I, I went there after six months I was doing my kickboxing. Then I, I realized that I'm not good in so many things in life, but I was good in fight. I mean, I think I can make a live of this. If this is my way out, I gotta put everything on. So my uncle told me, if you wanna do this, I can see by the videos you're really good and you like this. America's the place. Mixed martial arts, what you wanna do. You, you kickbox, make no money. Yeah, live in Porsche, you go nowhere. Uh, we talk in October, I pack it up and I come in December 2012. Because I believe if you wanna do something, you, you, you have to do 100%. By the time it was a crazy dream, but now, <laughs> yes. Even though he's currently 6-0 as a heavyweight coming out forever, he's still seen as an underdog in most of these fights. We've talked a little bit before about how age can be a factor. He is 32, but... I think that anybody that thinks he's an underdog is in for a rude awakening. Although if you ask him, he'll tell you that's what he prefers. What, what is being an underdog in the fight? I'm an underdog in life. I came from, from nowhere. I came from a place that no one would ever imagine that I could make it right now. So the underdog in fight for me is just, it's good. I like it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the way he fights is very similar to his career. You put his back against the wall, he's gonna come back. He's gonna come out better and harder, you know what I mean? Even though he's having success right now in his UFC career, it did not come easy. And it did not happen overnight. Mine was a, was a, lot, a lot of ups and downs. Like I started my amateur career, uh, I lost four fights. I went two in the road, I thought I was a king, then I lost four in the road, I was all depressed. Uh, I didn't think I could make it. But then in 2014, my daughter born. She had the, the shine of her eyes when she would look at me. Yes. And uh, uh, I said, I mean, I either gonna do something for this little girl and she can be proud of on pro uh, November 2017. Then I won three fights in the road. I won two. Then we, we, we got offered a fight of a cruiserweight champion, New England cruiserweight champion in Maine. One more, I was the underdog. I went to fight in Portland, Maine. Against a guy who was from Portland. 6'9", huge, you know. A little, a little guy from Forever went there and won the title, 3 0. Very exciting fight because Raz, the Sasquatch, is a very, very tall, very good fighter, and it was just exciting the entire fight. You're going to move forward, throwing big punches, and it was a phenomenal knockout. He's athletic for a big guy. You know what I mean? Like he can, he can throw flying knees, he can move his feet. And you can't, you don't see that a lot in a, big, in a bigger guy. They kind of like what they were seeing. First, he had to fight his way for a contract at Dano's White Contender Series in Las Vegas. I've heard from multiple guys, like multiple like UFC fighters at the Contender Series, they would never want to fight on the Contender Series because it's such a, 
surreal environment. Like it's so quiet and you're in front of your friends and family. There's a lot of pressure. This is it. This is your opportunity to show me what you have. You have to go bell to bell, knockout, submissions, whatever it is, you have to go for the finish. And uh, you, you know, th there's a lot of talent out there in this world right now. And I'm, lo I'm looking for killers. So. He answered a lot of questions when it comes down to like someone who's like a top wrestler and someone that can hold him down. And he went in there and he, he just shined. He proved a lot of people wrong, you know what I mean? And the guy couldn't take him down. Then a leg kick finished, then he went viral. He bring us to Vegas to lose because I was the biggest underdog on that card. And, and I get it done. The Castro. Loved his takedown defense. Loved the way that this guy fought. Finishes the fight on leg kicks. The biggest underdog on the card. And he took on the number eight ranked guy in, in, in the country for Greco-Roman wrestling. And was stuffing his takedowns, stopping his takedowns. Um, and this guy has, none of his fights have gone over two minutes. And he wins the fight. Leg kicks. I liked him. He's in. We're going to sign him. I couldn't believe it. Like so, wow, everything I, I dream for is, is right here. Till, till my last fight, they keep saying, I mean, I got signed, but now I have to prove that I belong here. With me, everything going to be like about earning. I have to prove it. After receiving a four-fight contract to fight in the UFC, he was now off to Australia to fight the 3-0 Justin Tuffer. He was on a live stage in front of 60,000 people, yet his mindset did not change. Everything I went through the life, brought me to that moment. When I was in the tunnel, wait, they count them, what, 10, 9, in my head, I keep going, like, I say, there's 60,000 people, but I'm only fighting one. So I'm gonna focus on him, and, and there's no way he's tougher than me, so I've been for so much in life, and I'm gonna prove it that this is my time, so every, everyone who crossed my, my, my path right now, I have to do it. Where his journey from, from a 2-4 amateur, obviously very talented, then to turn that all around to be a 6-0 UFC heavyweight, you know what I mean? And he's about to fight Greg Hardy, like, that's, it's a big deal. I think he can go as high as the, the top level of the sport. I think that um, at heavyweight, he's fast, he's explosive, he's very talented. I think that he can hang with anybody in the world. I train three hours a day every day. So, I know I can fight. At any moment, this is a two-man sport, one win, one lose, at any moment, sometimes. At some point, I gotta lose, but I am confident I can do it, and I can do it against anyone. It's hard to make it out of a small, struggling city like Forever. But meanwhile, Yorgini Castro is putting the city on his back. Since I came here three years ago, this city adopted me. And I'm proud. I mean, every time I, uh, I get to Forever, I feel like home. People like me, they love me, and I'm, I'm, they always got behind me. Crazy, it's crazy how the people got behind me. Before the fights, after the fight, uh, everything they do for me, people is that it. People support me, and I love Forever. Uh, it's huge for Forever. We got a professional athlete at the highest level of his sport, coming right out of our city, representing our city, and uh, doing it on ESPN. Well, Jorgen came from nothing. He came to Forever where a lot of people think there's nothing, but there's a lot of talent, there's a lot of potential, and he saw that, you know what I mean? And he kept down, he kept his head down, kept working, you know what I mean? And I think that's a good, for the kids, they can realize, oh, all I gotta do is just make the right decisions. You know I mean, that could be me. I mean, he's no different than I am. Even now, when he made it to UFC, he's still here for the people of Forever, as he works as security guard at Durfee High School. I'm still one of the everybody here. I mean, I'm, I'm still, I live right here. I see everybody around. So the connection with the kids, and I once, a long time ago, was like those kids. So a kid from small town with a no hope. So that connection, if I can, I like that. They keep me honest. That was crazy. I never felt something like that. Like he's still very humble, very nice. He'll stop and talk to anybody, no chip on his shoulder. 
Um, he, he's very, very good on the mic. I think that he's, he's adapting very well to the rise so far. We were together a lot, and you know what I mean? He's a big guy, I'm a little guy. You know, it's like a big brother, little brother relationship. And like, I just, we connect a lot as fighters. Like, we're very realistic, we're very open-minded. My, my goal is fight at least three, four times a year so I can be a full-time fighter. I like my job, but, but this sport is crazy. You gotta put a lot of time on it. I wake up, I go to work, and then I train, I train, I train. Sometimes my, I'm 32, my, sometimes my body gets tired. I can just train and fight and afford to live and give, give my family a, a decent life. That's my goal. Let me ask you something. Yeah. He's going to be punching to death. So he says, he will do that. Even though DiCastro loves the game, he recognizes the dangers of it. I want to be a husband. I want to be a son. I want to be a friend. So if I ever get knocked out three times and my brain starts and I got all the consequences of the, the beat, I'm, I'm going to retire, I'm going to stop. When the time comes and it's all said and done, the castle just asks of us to remember this. I want to remember as a kid who come from nowhere and make it.